So very soon after college, I'd had one small exhibition, and from having this, had this exhibition in which I showed um, essentially four pieces of sculpture, probably the first sculpture I'd consider that I made called Closet, and a piece called Mantle, and a piece called Shallow Breath, and the first Torso. And these four pieces were, were, were essentially the, the four elements that would be in a small bed sitting room, you know, a living room that someone like myself would be, you know, staying in after kind of leaving college, you don't have much money. And then, you know, my immediate thought was actually what I'd like to do is sort of cast the space that these pieces would fit in. So that was really where it came from, but just had this thought of, of wanting to try and, um, I think I use the phrase, mummify the air in a room. It took me a number of months to find grants to apply for, to, to, to get the money together, to find a space to show the work in, and obviously find the room to cast. So there were all these sort of um, balls in the air. One of them had to land before anything would sort of fall into place. So, for, you know, for a very young artist, which I was, um, it, you know, it was really quite an ambitious thing to, to try and make happen. I'd had a little bit of practice with when I made closet, for example, and mantle. So I was already thinking about components, putting components together and trying to make them fit, and, and, and really thinking about constructing something in terms of a drawing. And I remember looking at actually Vermeer and particularly Piero della Francesca paintings, and just trying to work out compositions and how very clear, you know, with the you know, the, how the perspective wasn't really developed properly. And, and I, was, I was looking at those and, and thinking about being in a three-dimensional space, but having to make a sort of flat drawing in order to make a three-dimensional object. So I, when I um, chose the room to cast, it had to have a door, a uh, window and a fireplace. And I used those as kind of key elements, especially the fireplace. One, because it had to be the... The, you know, it had to be cast in a certain way in order to retrieve it from the actual room. So that had to be very carefully worked out. But essentially, by starting with, you know, one or two key places, um, everything else had to sort of fall into position. I was 27, so I think I've, I've been out of college for maybe three or four years. Bearing in mind, you know, I was having to do waitressing jobs and painting and decorating and any other way to earn money as well in order to keep a studio going. So, you know, I was never had the luxury of being a sort of full-time artist at that point. You know, there was no water in the house, there was no electricity, so I was having to borrow the neighbour's water and electricity. And, you know, it was all very kind of haphazard the way it was put together. I didn't have a car, I used to cycle up there with a bag of plaster on my bike, you know, <laughs> cycling up Archway Road, which was quite hard work, you know. So it was all, you know, it was made in that way. It was, it was, it was, I, you know, I suppose in retrospect, incredibly kind of ambitious thing to do, but it was great fun to make it, actually. I'd like to make things in that way again, you yeah. <laughs> know. You can't repeat naivety, though. <laughs> First of all, what I had to do was to make a kind of false foundation in the room because the, the room was completely uneven, so I had to make a sort of flat area to start from. Um, so we made this very sort of thin foundation, thin on one corner and, uh, you know, on one other part of the room it was about three or four inches. So there was quite a discrepancy in the sort of um, height of the room. So we started with that then drew up how it was going to be cast, and then literally started with the first piece, having made a drawing on the wall, flicking plaster onto it, then using hessian, putting that in place, flicking more plaster, and getting thicker with the plaster, more hessian, until I built up maybe two or three inches. Uh, some of the edges are keyed differently to try and help it sort of, um, you know, stand up. But it has a, a, a metal framework inside it. Um, you know, when I was making the piece, the, I think that one of the interesting parts was that 
the walls in the room were all made from plaster and lath, and which is a you know traditional way of, of, of plastering rooms, which is kind of horse hair and very old plaster. And you just touch the walls and the walls would move. I mean, they were just really um, falling apart. So it was an incredibly fragile environment to cast. So I was constantly having to repair the room as I was making the piece, which you can actually see on the surface of this, all that kind of information is there. I think that was, that was quite challenging, trying to sort of work that way with it. I can remember going to the studio and having spent maybe, you know, six weeks or something working on this framework and sort of putting it all together. And I'd been working with Marcus and going in one morning on my own and opening the door and the sun was coming in and it was this sort of incredible light. And I suddenly, I saw the door and the light switch and I had this sort of eureka moment when I thought, I'm the wall, that's what I've done. I'm the wall and the, the viewer is the wall. Well, one of the most interesting things that anyone ever said to me about Ghost was um, it was a man who, when I showed it, um, was, it was in Bristol and he had had, he'd been in prison, this guy, at one point in his life. And he said that it reminded me of feeling inside his pocket. And I thought that was a very beautiful way of uh, describing something, and especially from someone that had at one point in his life been very much sort of enclosed in a space that he just couldn't get out of. So, I, you know, I, I always, that really touched me as a, as a kind of thought. Um, you know, I think people read all sorts of things into this piece and, you know, I think it had, because it is so connected with um, our own physical sort of dimension and, you know, how we live our lives and where we sleep and eat and die and you know, spend our time. <laughs>